My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arachir Galadurthan, head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. Arachir, uh, and welcome back as we continue on as Edit Lewin. Now, before I dive in, something I did just want to say is that we ran a little poll on the Discord, or rather, we are running a poll on the Discord at the moment for everyone's top three favourite factions and least favourite factions factions you're three of each if you haven't had an opportunity to vote on that then please do go to discord the link is in the description below you will have to sign up if you're not a member so if you, that stops you then so be it uh, and you'll find that in the Tirith IR text thread that you can put a thumb up for the three factions you like the most and a thumb down for the three you dislike now there is actually nothing stopping you from liking say 10 or 15 of them but do try to keep it to three up and three down because otherwise it'll totally ruin the poll um and uh, it's just purely informative. We just want to know what everyone's general feelings are. Uh, the poll will run probably until the end of today. So this, when I say today, this video is released on um, the 31st of July 2020. And uh, was released at 6 o'clock in the morning British summer time. So by the end of today, I mean about probably 6 o'clock in the evening British summer time. Uh, so you can go and vote and um, then I will probably correlate all of those results and put them into a video because I think that would be quite interesting. So uh, with that out of the way, let's continue as we are with Edward Lewitt. We are about to fight up here. Um, Clan Herald Orween at the end of the next turn will fight with Steen and then we'll move east with him. Barketa, we are sending troops to support, but I think they'll hold, to be honest. Not really a feared of that battle. And in the south, our army has just started marching. Nain, the forces come from Erebor and khazad -dum. Now, someone did mention, should you not also send a diplomat to the Orokani? But of course, the Orokani are not represented in Divide and Conquer by an actual faction. They are a subset of Erebor. And you may have noticed, had you actually bothered to watch the video, that the Orokani actually do send troops because four of the units that came from Erebor are Orokani Blacklock Crossbowmen. So the Orokani are actually covered. Uh, they're not going to be included. Uh, something that I feel absolutely fantastic about in the, uh, if I can just talk about it now because it's the first time I have the opportunity to, discussion of the poll that is running on the Discord, something I found absolutely thrilling to learn is that despite the overwhelming um, onslaught against me for daring to suggest that Kanda are a boring faction, Kanda actually voted one of the least popular factions in the entire mod. So um, it's a classic and fantastic example of how the most vocal people, those who oppose something the most, are the ones most likely to talk about it, and the people who are either apathetic or um, actually in support generally don't mention it. So, Kand has an overwhelming dislike-to-like ratio. Um, now, no faction is going to be removed on the back of that poll. Um, so, don't fear that you're going to lose your can. You don't need to give me another onslaught of why Kand should stay. Um, but it is just very interesting to learn that even though the comments on that Kand overview were, Can should stay. Kand are amazing. I can't believe you'd recommend getting rid of Kand. How stupid is this? Um, actually, I'm afraid you are massively in the minority. So, Ha! <laughs> ha 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 ha! If I may be childish and lord over you with this small victory, I'm going to. Um, so I'm pleased to say Cand are disliked by the majority of Divide and Conquer players. Uh, and I'm also really surprised to learn, obviously the poll has not finished yet, but um, the Northern Dunedain are way more popular than I ever thought they were. Also, the Northern Dunedain are actually going to be renamed again, and in the poll they're currently listed as Dunedain of Arnor, but... Um, we have taken the decision that we're just going to rename them Dunedain and call it a day at that. Absolutely nobody in their right mind confuses Dunedain with Gondor. Yes, Gondorians technically are Dunedain. Oh god, do I hate this battle map. Uh, yes, Gondorians are Dunedain, as are Dol Amroth. They have Dunedain blood in them. But no one really calls them the Dunedain of Gondor, do they? And most people nowadays will be coming to Divide and Conquer, I should imagine, from the films, far from the books. And in the films, there is a clear distinction between the Dunedain, one of whom, of course, Aragorn is a member. And that's pretty much where we get the only use of the word in the films, where Aragorn is um, mentions that he's one of the Dunedain. Or rather, Eowyn says it to him, doesn't she? You are one of the Dunedain. Uh, and... No one really in Gondor mentions that they are Dunedain. So we're just going to rename them Dunedain is what I'm trying to get at while I cover the fact that I cannot place my units for love nor money. Right, is that everyone? Yes, it is. Oh, this battle map is hard to fight on. I would welcome a change to battle maps like this, whereby we just simply widen the path from the gate to the square and call it a day. Um, obviously, the next tier up, the next castle tier is actually not too bad, but this one is just horrendous. 
Uh, now, we're not really up against enough units to mean that they'll force their way through the gate that effectively, but I think we probably will still fight at the gate. Uh, but we don't need to worry too much about what happens at the gate just yet, because the AI's got siege equipment, so they are likely to um, break down the wall rather than go through the gate. So, but we will um, position our elite units to prepare to hold the center. And when I say elite, I mean the better of all of our units here today. Um, do let me know your thoughts on Dunedain of Arnor becoming just Dunedain. It is in preparation of the fact that we're going to add in our variant of the Reunited Kingdom for the next version. Version 5, which RK has given a name. I don't know if it was RK on his own, but I absolutely love it. And the name of version 5 is called A Kingdom United. Which I really like. I think that's a fantastic name. Um, so the Reunited Kingdom is obviously the focus of version 5. And the Reunited Kingdom, I'm afraid to say, will be a Northern Dunedain or Dunedain only script. You won't be able to reforge the Reunited Kingdom as Gondor. Um, not in the first instance anyway. Maybe in the future we might consider that. But I just think... For Gondor, it just doesn't make all that much sense. Uh, and it would be, there'd just be too many sort of hoops to jump through as Gondor to get it to actually work. Whereas the Dunedain, it makes sense. Uh, many people have also asked, and something I can confirm, is that Bree will be included in the subsuming. So Bree and Gondor will join together with the Northern Dunedain to make the reunited kingdom. I am on the fence as to whether or not Dol Amroth should be included in that. Um, but... Because I, I don't know if including Dol Amroth will make the, the nation just too big and unmanageable and a bit tedious. But we'll see. I mean, it's a very simple addition to include Dol Amroth. It's literally one line of code. So um, we can uh, judge it, uh, judge it later on. Right. Gentlemen here, if you would now get into position. I've completely ignored you and that's going to be to my detriment. Oh, wow. Well, you can get shot from there. You're joking. Right. And you guys come up here. And get into those positions. There we are, nice. Yeah, so the Reunited Kingdom will be relatively straightforward. Um, it was something that we want to happen relatively early and not something we want to be a late game reward. So it's more of a, it's almost like a choice of do I want to play this campaign as the RK or as the Dunedain? Um, and you can make those decisions. Of course, the major feature of the Reunited Kingdom is just the Reunited Kingdom itself. We're not trying to make one, we're not trying to balance the paths. So it shouldn't be a, oh, I really want to play as the Dunedain because um, of this, this, and this. Or I really want to play as the Reunited Kingdom because of this, this, and this. Um, that doesn't that doesn't really make it make sense at all. What I mean is there it there will probably be one side that's obviously, say, stronger than the other. But the point is the variety. The Dunedain will play exactly as they play at the moment. You'll have your Beacon of Hope, which I also look, I'm going to expand. So the further away from the Dunedain homeland you get, the more units from those newer factions you can recall on. Which really gives the Dunedain that feeling of, of reuniting or uniting the whole world. Um, you will get the units. You will get some really good units from nations really far away. So the further away you expand, you are actually rewarded, and you're not you're not at um, 150 conquering lands in Dale, only to be given Dale militia. Like who needs Dale militia 150 turns in? Nobody does. So the further away you get, the more elite units you'll get from the allies. Um, is something that the Dunedain will have. The Reunited Kingdom will not have the beacon. So the thing you will lose is that beacon system. Um, and it will then be for you to decide, do I want to play as the Dunedain this time or do I want to play as the Reunited Kingdom? And in creating that decision, I think it lends itself well for that decision to be made early. The later that decision is made, the more your hand is forced. So if the decision to play as the Reunited Kingdom comes in at, say, turn 200, you've already basically completed the campaign and you've played an entire campaign as the Dunedain only to then get the opportunity to play as the RK, which... I don't think is very good, personally. I think it should be relatively early. So the requirements for the RK are jotted down in brief at the moment, but they are subject to change depending on how we feel, um, how quick or how easy it is to reform it. I want it to be easy, basically. Remember that our reunited kingdom, we're not going to go... Um, the reunited kingdom is never going to work properly. You'll still be called... I don't think it, the name can't change and the icon 
can't change. And oh, the colors and no, sorry, the colors and the name won't change, but your icon will. So you won't change to be called the Reunited Kingdom. Your name will remain Dunedain. Your faction icon will remain the scepter and crown of Anumanas with the stars around it that the Dunedain currently have and will still be green. And your nation's color will still be green. Um, but what will change, I've just said that wrong, what will change is the actual icon itself. So your faction icon will change to the proper Reunited Kingdom icon and it will take on a blue colour, I expect. And Aragorn can get a, a more kingly campaign strategy model. Those are things we can do. And of course your roster will change slightly. There's some units that we will put in for the Reunited Kingdom. They haven't been done yet because we're, we're in a sort of rest period after version 4.5 at the moment. Um, but... There will be extra units that you can get as a Reunited Kingdom, but it won't be a wholesale change like it is in certain other mods. Because, number one, I absolutely do not want the player to have to close down the game, run a batch file, go back into the game in order to change the Reunited Kingdom. I've never liked that, um, and I just don't... I'm not... I'm not... Um, I'm not concerned about going into that much detail, because I, Divide and Conquer is now very much, to my mind, the baseline... We've included Third Age Total War. I think we're we're arguably on par in terms of popularity with Third Age Total War now. And so we no longer need to think, oh, our mod must be really different from Third Age. We must pack in as much as we can. I feel like now we are at a point where we can do what we want. And if other people then have visions, they will create submods. I think we're at the point where we now have submods, essentially. And so I don't want our mod to be too restrictive or too difficult to use. The aim of Divide and Conquer now is to be very simple. Is to have, yes, scripts and variety and interest. But on the whole, it needs to be easy to use. Um, and very, uh, well, yeah, easy to install, easy to use and simplistic, essentially, in its nature. And then submods, if they want, can then make things more complicated. And if people really like that, then maybe we'll include that later on in our mod. Um, if it's shown to be really popular. So the other thing with the Reunited Kingdom, something that I think Heirs of Elendil does, is they base their entire campaign on hot seat mode so that you can, when you swap to be the Reunited Kingdom, you actually swap. But um, we don't really want to have to go through and respec the campaign to work, um, respec the single player campaign to be a hot seat campaign. I'm not, I'm not really keen on doing that. Um, so we won't take that method. So in short, the Reunited Kingdom is not going to be a game-changing script. You won't massively feel like you have changed. Your name's not going to change and your colour's not going to change. Your icon will, Aragorn's um, campaign strategy model will, but his title won't change, although we've already changed his title to be High King Aragorn anyway. Um, but his title won't can't change in the game while it's ongoing. So I'm just kind of setting you all up that the Reunited Kingdom, whilst it will be an interesting and I think pretty damn cool feature, it's not going to be a wholesale change because Medieval 2 cannot allow that without doing some very weird and wonderful things that I don't really want to do. So there we are. Um, why am I rambling about the Reunited Kingdom? Oh, because we're calling them the Dunedain. So yeah, your faction will just be called the Dunedain. And when you re-change to the arcade, you'll still just be called the Dunedain. Uh, but anyway, sorry, I've talked for ages about something which is totally unrelated to what's happening. Um, the enemy is slogging their way through our forces, and Only half the enemy we've killed more of them than they've killed of us. So I think victory is closing in. Although if we put our ballastai up on that slope there, they might be able to fire our in and hit them down at the, the gate, battle. actually. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. They've made it to our pike line, but they're not using their mass against us, so our pikes are holding. Although we are getting flanked a little bit because of the way pikes line up on streets, which is annoying. And we've lost some of our dwarven labourers, but we really couldn't care less. Dwarven labourers are a dime a dozen for uh, dwarves. They are so readily available. <laughs> right, let's see if our ballister crews can our fire over that for a building the there. The enemy oh, yes, dead. fantastic. Let the crows have his miserable bones and let our swords have his men. Oh, they're starting to run. They don't like the Ballister crews. And their general has died. And I think it's over other than that crew over there. Yes, it is. The hillmen aren't running away, so we use what little we have on them. Oh, the thralls are coming back, though. Are Can you target the them? If we continue like this, we will smash the oh, enemy. We got one guy. How accurate was that? Blimey. Able to kill just a single person. So our unit's out here now just clearing off the ballister crew. 
and down they go. Um, I think, unfortunately, regarding the poll, I believe you do have to have a Discord account in order just to see Discord, um, I'm afraid. So if you just wanted to have a look at it, then you'll have to wait for me to formulate the results into a YouTube video, which I absolutely will do. I'm really quite excited to do that. I'm really excited just about the poll in general. It's fascinating look to me to see which nations um, are just loathed and which ones people really like. It's been a real eye-opener this past few days. 257 kills to Orban labourers. Um, it was a success. The garrison um, held as we thought that it would. Uh, the poll has been so successful, actually, that I plan on using it for a few other possible videos in the future now that we're losing the faction overviews. Uh, I'm quite keen to also judge people's opinion on sort of which units that they like, which um, designs they like, which scripts people like. I think it's a really simple and effective polling method because all you have to do you don't have to comment you don't have to you could don't have to break your anonymity which people like you don't have to go to another website to Sire, vote the on the poll you can just walk. go into discord put a thumb up next to the thing you like and then disappear back into the miasma uh, which um, people like so i think it's proven very effective thus far we have got two comings of age um gentlemen in fuero so oh, that's good um, just as we get attacked there and in a gentleman called Nuris he looks ready for battle doesn't he blimey very aggressive uh, don't really have any use for you though Nuris here are the Blacklock engineers coming from the Orokani and I think I've mentioned this before but I can just show you now this section here is going to be or has already been moved for version 5 up here so it will be at the start of the description rather than at the end which is quite nice Nuris and Gunlord Oh, hang on. So, Nuris is the fellow who uh, married in. Um, oh, no. He just married Gunlord. Yes, sorry. She's 26. Blimey, she's 10 years his senior. I suppose it doesn't matter as much on your dwarves, does it? I mean, it doesn't even matter in our lives. 10 years isn't all that much. It's just rather unheard of for a, um, the lady to be older, isn't it? I, Torvald. Callie the cat is awake. Although I keep I getting sorry. paranoid about you guys hearing noises, but ever since I tweaked my microphone settings, uh, which still aren't perfect to my mind, but um, is much better. There are way less um, spikes in the microphone recording now. The only thing that I could really do from here, unfortunately, I've looked into the microphones extensively, and the only real option is because I have a blue Yeti, and it plugs in via a USB connection, my only other option would be to download some sort of software on the computer and record my voice separately from using NVIDIA, which is what I currently use to record the screen and my voice. And it does it all in a single click, which I absolutely love. The alternative, of course, is to get a non-USB microphone and run it through a box that I can't remember the name of that then has its own independent microphone controls on it. And that would eliminate uh, the sound problems that I sometimes have. Right, we're going in. We have got to attack them after all that. The forces are not particularly threatening and they don't have a general and we have a good army. Including Grinfarn the Conqueror. Um, and it will... Their reinforcements are coming in directly behind them and then we've got that fellow coming in from the east who I think might be the old faction heir, the Northguard general. We'll see. Uh, something that I plan to do in the coming days, and I keep it's one of the things I keep meaning to do when I start a bit of modding, when I do the odd bug fix, is go through all the factions and really diversify the starting faction bodyguards. Uh, there are some factions who have very little starting diversity, um, and I'd just like to go through and give some different types of, of uh, generals. Um, yeah, you guys are going to go first. We'll offer them up as a sacrifice. And then the main line will go behind. The enemy, I think, will just stand over there. They don't really have a hill to speak of. A little bit of a hill there, maybe. Um, their reinforcements, as already mentioned, will be coming in from either directly behind or up in this corner. And again, they don't really have a hill. I think they'll probably put themselves up there. Maybe they'll pull all the way back to that hill over there, actually, which means we've got a walk and a half on our hands. Which isn't great. Um, we do have range units today, though, which is nice to see. And then, of course, a few actually good units. And indeed, a cavalry battalion. The enemy have ah, no, they've gone directly in front of us. Quite possibly the worst position they could have gone into. 
Uh, and they are coming directly for us. So be it. Move the lines. Let's send the swordman on that way. And let's put the pikes out on this side. Because the pikes are the ones that are going to have to defend from the fellow who's coming in on the side. So we'll send the pikes and the generals to the right. Uh, and crossbows, move yourselves forward as well. And feel free to fire when you are able. Cavalry moving up. Let's speed her up. I saw today that the Wood Elves have been given or are going to get an update before Warhammer 3 comes out. And, and likely will be the last update to Warhammer 3. Uh, Warhammer 2 before number 3 is worked on and produced. Um, right, let's... Hold your ground against those skirmishes. Oh, they're skirmishes. No, don't hold your ground. Right, let's run everyone up and in. Cavalry, there is a task. Get yourselves over there. Swordmen, run to the corner. Pikes are manoeuvring into position quite nicely, or rather already have. Our enemy will be coming over that hill there. Crossbows, I think you're going to be better served turning you to the right, actually, and get you out of the main battle line here. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. We are already causing some of them to think they might want to rout. <laughs> We've only been fighting for a few moments. Um, right, you're all fighting there, and you guys went for the skirmishes. Did you make it? Just about. I think they'll just about shut them down. And here comes the reinforcing army as our pikes get ready to line. Is there anything coming on that right hand side? No. There is nothing coming on that side. So if we curl you around there, crossbows just stand like that, and run the generals forward. 12 o'clock. She's early. It's all right, we've only got this battle and then we're done today. Bum, 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 bum. Holding there quite nicely. Is it? Oh, we have a unit not doing anything. Run through the center there, sir, and then turn and hit them in the back. And if you can come up here and hit these pikes, Oh, and our cavalry will die, but I'm not too bothered about that. We'll leave them there to tie the wags up. Although they have been hit rather hard by those thralls. You can send the wags on a merry chase instead, actually. Alright, send the pikes and whatnot out. Send the generals up and out as well. Oh, you're getting a beating. Who's shooting you? Hmm, not sure. The pike line marches, and it looks good while it's doing it. Ah, he's worked perfectly and hit them in the back. We have got that pike unit there that we're not doing anything with. You guys go and shut down that baluster crew. You come and help on this pike unit. Run them away. Keep going, keep going. Our pikes have hit the savages. You guys can turn and hit those savages too. Run yourselves up that hill. And if you charge into those Huskars. Who have we got fighting there? Oh, some militia. I'm not worried about that. No, there's an absolute sandwich there. We charged into the back of them, and then we got charged into the back of. Can't get away from the enemy. Right, cavalry, are they coming for you? Where's that Thrall Battalion? Charge into those. Let's head back over here. Move in there, move in there. I'm thoroughly enjoying playing Age of Empires at the moment. Getting all of the campaign achievements. I've started the Chinggis Khan campaign and um, I've got the first two achievements. Kill Kushluck in under 20 minutes and defeat the Jinn in episode Only number three or mission three remains. before they build their wonder. Uh, that one was a bit more nerve wracking because I had seen a video that explained, I didn't watch how he did it, but I watched a video which gave some information that the Jinn is scripted to start building their wonder after 40 minutes. So to my mind it was defeat the Jinn in 40 minutes and I didn't do that. It took me 56 in-game minutes to defeat the Jinn. Uh, but it obviously it runs at 1.7 speed, so whatever that is in real time, I don't know. I don't know 56, um, 1.7... Um, as a fraction of 56. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've, I succeeded. I was pleased. And then the rest of the mission was an absolute joke, to be honest. It was a doddle. But I still absolutely love it. <clears throat> Speaking of things being a doddle, this battle's turning into one, isn't it? The enemy is falling like kindling, a preferred metaphor of mine. With no general, though, it's just this, this game is so reliant on generals. 
I remember playing um, Med 2 and then the first time I changed over to play Shogun um, and coming from Med 2 where generals are absolute powerhouses even if they're on foot they're still monsters I remember it was quite a shock bloody. playing Shogun 2 because generals in that one just seem to die so easily they absolutely fall to arrow fire like it's nothing oh no don't charge into those pikes that was a silly maneuver um, and so I'd often get my generals killed in Shogun, but I felt like in Shogun the army wasn't as reliant on your general surviving to stay fighting. It didn't matter too much that I got them killed off all the time. We have lost half our men. Oh, well, we've lost half of our fighting force. The enemy's down to 68%. We've got a lot of units there doing nothing. Ah, we've got some archers, and our cavalry's already manoeuvred into position to sort that out. If you can attack those Huskars and support our general there, and then you guys were going up the hill. The cavalry should pin them in position. Where's Grinfarn? He's not doing anything. Oh, he's right up there, though. That's good. He really needs an ability, doesn't he? Um, otherwise, how goes it over here? Rudolf Pikemen are running away. The rules. Ah, oh, Hillman fighting on there. Let's finish those off. 27 guys over here doing nothing. Go and hit those wild riders. Everyone else is at least doing something, aren't they? Yes. I keep them pinned. The pikes are coming. The pikes are coming. And then you can run away. Oh, <laughs> I was talking to my own men, but uh, I'll welcome your running away as well. Right. We need to go and shut those down now, then. They're the last ones fighting on, really, and they're giving us the merry chase. But they can't run forever. Oh, look, the wags came in just at the wrong moment there. Now, we probably will lose almost all of those merchants. But they've only got to stay there long the enough. Yes! The field. After them. Capture them, capture them, capture them, capture them. Just get some of them, please. Yeah, that'll have to do. Fantastic victory! 940 lost there. That's quite a lot. For 2,300-ish killed. Total kills, top spot, 278, Merchant Cavalry. Well done, says. Proving Cavalry, even when you are the mighty dwarves, still an absolute monster on the field. And 195 next? No, 196, very close. Eridu and Pikeman, and 195 Dwarven Labourers. Labourers are actually, Labourers are definitely the best trash tier unit of any nation um, because they have that armour-piercing boost. That's the problem with Dak, though. It's a little predictable because we've followed Tolkien's sometimes over-exaggerated battle prowess, at, like as being shown on the screen right now. That's an image of Gondolin, of course, just before it falls and the army of Morgoth are moving in to finish it. And at Gondolin, we get some absolutely outrageous stunts from the elves of the First Age, taking on multiple Balrogs and winning, headbutting a Balrog into the fountain in the centre of the courtyard from Ecthelion. Um, some insane feats of prowess. And we've followed that kind of pattern that the elves are fantastic warriors. So it does mean that any kind of top 10 video, like, who has the best trash? Um, it would just be dominated with dwarves and elves. Any question that isn't based around, um, like, sort of highest damage, they will always win. Which is why it's almost better to do those lists without thinking of the elves. Who actually is the best? Because I think, although the elves don't really have a trash unit anymore, actually, do they? Because we took away the uh, sword and bow, Quendi, didn't we? So elves just don't have a trash tier. And comparatively to their own roster, they don't have a trash tier. That's how trash is worked out. It's not relative to other nations, because dwarven labourers are as good as Gondor militia. Um, um, and of course, Gondor militia and dwarven labourers, neither are trash in the grand scheme of the world. They're both actually sort of mid-tier, really, if you take every unit in the game as an average. Uh, but relative to their own rosters, they are the trash. Um, their attack is almost half, is less than half of the actual militia unit of the dwarves. Uh, so, but it, I mean, there's, I think things like that are probably, uh, videos like that are the best bet for what to replace the faction overviews limits. with. But they take so much longer to do, um, and I moan about it all the time, but of course YouTube for me is just a hobby, um, and I can't devote hours and hours and hours of time to it a week. Like people like Spirit of the Law, for example, his videos are always really detailed and really in-depth, but in order to do that he does like one video every two weeks or so. Um, so you, you, you get there's a payoff, isn't there? The more detailed videos are, the more time it takes. 
But speaking of time, that concludes today's episode. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. I do hope to do a DCI continuation episode tomorrow, and then of course there'll be the Dunland Faction Overview on Sunday. Uh, and then sometime next week I will do a video after the poll closes with who's voted as the favourite of the factions. So do head to Discord, link in the description below. Look for the Tirith IR text channel and just vote up the three that you like the most and vote down the three you dislike. Please don't give any other type of reactions because they make it harder for us to find out what we actually want to find out. Uh, and I like uniformity and organisation. I'm already disappointed that people chose to use a different colour from the one that I initially requested. So now there are two different sets of thumbs up and thumbs down, which is frustrating. But anyway, for now, that concludes. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. And until we speak again, Navarna den Peramad Malunin. And farewell.